Uh, welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 68. Uh, I'm Pete. And I'm Pat. And, uh, man, the fucking kids today. You know how you know you're getting old? How's that, Pete? Uh, I just read a news story, uh, about some teens that murdered another teen. Right. Uh, and I didn't understand it. <laughs> So I guess they use like uh, teen murder lingo, like interpretive murder, and it was just a language you couldn't grasp. Kind of. So in Colorado, a teen was killed over $25 worth of vape juice. Oh, that. I kind of get that because uh, even South Park touched up on how um, schools are starting to have like a big vaping problem. So I I, I, I guess that's like one of those things that... Because, I mean, whenever you're addicted to tobacco, you would do anything, including murder your fellow students to get a hold of it. Yeah, but this was so... This, this news story, I just... I'm so old, I'm like, what? Kids killing each other for juice these days? You can go down to the corner store and get you some juice for a nickel! That's what we used to do! Not if you're 17 or younger. Yeah, uh, and then to make it even more like teenage, but- apparently... Uh, Lloyd Chavez. By the way, what a weird mixture of names. His last name is Chavez, so he's clearly Hispanic, but his first name is Lloyd, which is clearly makes him a 60-year-old baby boomer. Hi there, my name's uh, Bob Tabernacle. I'm, uh, it's good to meet you. Bob, Tag- Bob Tabernacle still <laughs> seems pretty white. I suppose. I was just trying to think of like two names that didn't go together. I'm, uh, I'm Fred Muhammad. How are you? That's, yeah, that's a little bit like, wait, what? Um... <laughs> But yeah, so they, they, they shot him over vape juice that apparently he was uh, advertising as selling on Snapchat. And I'm like, that's the most millennial murder I've ever heard. And I'm a little bit old and I'm a little bit scared that I don't... I, I mean, I understand what... I'm a little bit rock and roll! <laughs> and I, I get... I, under, and I know what Snapchat is. I know what vape juice is. But it was just weird to see all those things together in like a... Uh, the most teenage thing ever. And it was over $25, too, which is also weird. And they were like, boy, boy, tote, totes on fleek. And you're like, huh? Yeah, I don't... Also, as, as I murdered the guy. I think that you're also behind on... Totes uh, turnt on fleek. Totes isn't even a word anymore. That's like so three years ago. That's more I'm, than I'm three annoyed. years. I'm annoyed. That's more than three years ago, my friend. Don't do that! I don't uh, know. I'm, I'm so old now. I, you know, I, I forget the lingo. Do people still say noob? Tell me they still say noob. Totes, totes, my goat was something I think that went away when we were fucking uh, teenagers killing, oh! killing people over vape juice, you know, with our, ah! with our Snapchats and our. I know. just downloaded Snapchat for the first time this week. I still haven't actually made the account because I found out I had to make an account. I was just like, I want the camera and the filters, yeah. but it it doesn't just give you that. You have to sign up, and I'm like. You and yours. We started playing with it at work, and we took pictures of all of us. Is apparently there's a filter that turns you into a uh, a baby version of yourself. There's one that turns you into a woman version of yourself, and that's what got me to download it. But it's like <laughs> not worth like having to sign up. Pat's so that's, that's five minutes of my life I'll never get back. <laughs> Pat's so lonely. He's like, maybe if I turn myself <laughs> into another woman. Now, does it but give you're... you does it give you the bosoms as well? I'm really interested in the bosoms. <laughs> Patricia will love me. Mm. Yeah, I look terrifying as a woman, by the way. Oh, God, did you do that? Yeah, uh, it makes me... I, I hear that if you have a beard, it gives you more beard. And it doesn't give you more beard, but it makes me look... So there's a little interesting historical thing. Uh, if you go back in time to when China became very isolationist, and then they met uh, Westerners again for the first time, the way right. they drew Westerners was really odd, and it was very similar to the way they drew Japanese demons. Cool. And I look like the Japanese drawing of a uh, of a of a of a white man slash Japanese demon when they make me a woman. And I go, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what the legend behind the Peter demon is. Like, you know, if you're ever at a truck stop in the middle of the night and you go to the bathroom and while you're sitting there taking a crap. Peter comes and he knocks on the door. He knocks three times. That's how you know it's him, the Peter Demon. Why is that even a legend? None of those things are things about me. I, I've 
I was just trying to think of like Japanese demon legends, and one of them is of someone that knocks on the door and asks you a question, and if you uh, answer, it like drags you to hell, or if you refuse to answer, it rips your skin off. And I'm like, those are both awful options. I feel like a lot of Japanese demons are just awkward social situations we encounter nowadays. Like, because I know if I'm in a public restroom and someone knocks on the door, I don't want to answer. Go away! Yeah, Yeah. Uh, I always I I do the I even add more to that demon Laura. You know, if you're in a bathroom at a gas station and somebody knocks, it's a demon. The way to save yourself is to answer in Spanish, which is what I always do. (laughs) No no bueno. (laughs) I always go like El Ocupado, hombre. I is here is El Ocupado, Jalapeno. Yeah, so that's uh, fucking weird. Um, oh, man, so I got some really great uh, dear, dear Amy's for us today. You ready for these? Sweet. Yes, yes. If people have not caught on yet, we are both completely burnt out from um, bad news, and so now all we want to do is talk about you know happy things like teenagers murdering each other and dear mm-hmm. Aunt Amy. So much of the news just reads like a repeat of, like, your parents died in a horrible car wreck today. Cool! I wanted to hear that again. Thanks oh, for the reminder. I wonder what happens ba-dum-bum, tomorrow. Ba-dum-bum. Uh, Congress said that your parents deserved it and passed a resolution. Like, <laughs> what? Come on! You know what I mean? Oh, really? <laughs> About this, Dad? The next day, one Ohio senator said not only did your parents deserve the car wreck, but in fact the state of Ohio is going to sue you because of the car wreck. Yeah, just as you're just like, why are we piling on? You know, every time Trump brings up the um, 2016 election, which... God, he does it every opportunity he gets. But it always does, like, really dig into my skin because that was the day he stole the election using Russian hackers and collusion and all that. So every time, just, like, the level of ire it draws from me really is the same as him saying, so do you remember that day in 2016 when your parents died and there was blood and you were screaming, why, Mommy, why? Why would you leave me like that? Oh, the last thing she saw was your disappointment, your disappointment that she would let herself die. Why did you do that? And there was so much red everywhere all over that map. Yeah, it is a lot of, like, can he just stop talking? All right. So, dear Amy, it says... My husband of 25 years has an obsession with voyeur photography. He is addicted to websites that feature women filmed without their consent or knowledge, uh, filmed oh. with hidden cameras, etc. You know, I've heard about these. Apparently, on they, they all got moved. They got chased around the internet to, uh, I think it's Tumblr. And there's a, there's a whole there's a whole like Tumblr thread of like upskirt photos and like creepy voyeur photos and stuff, right? I thought even Tumblr like grew a conscience at some point. Uh, it Maybe might that's something it, else. It might be know. Tumblr. It might be one of those other ones. But yeah, it got they got it got chased off of Reddit and everything. He says, mm-hmm. "My husband has shown me pictures of wives and girlfriends who have been filmed without their consent. I think this type of pornography is wrong on so many levels, and I wonder how it can even be legal." Uh, well, FYI, it's, it's not. Not. It's, it's not legal. Yeah, I am deeply hurt and considering divorce. My husband keeps telling me he will stop, but he always goes back to the porn. Um, alcoholics can stop drinking with success. Can porn addicts ever stop watching porn? Any for, advice is appreciated. First of all, don't get him to stop watching porn. Get him to stop watching that kind of shit, because that's really fucked up. You really don't want to be buying into a system where people are being filmed without their consent, yeah. because, A, that could actually be very dangerous for the people being filmed, so you're... By buying into that, you're encouraging the wrong people to be out there doing the wrong stuff. Yeah, the but problem... Also, also, what's going on here is that your husband is not taking you serious when you tell him how much you hate this. You have to make it extremely clear to him that you're not cool with this shit. Yeah. You have to make sure he understands that, and then I promise you he'll quit. He's not that addicted to it. The pro- Yeah, the problem is not with the porn in and of itself, which is a whole different conversation. It's that he's watching non-consensual porn. That's like, uh, my girlfriend yeah. really enjoys horror movies that scar me emotionally. <laughs> Fine, you know what I mean? But she doesn't enjoy snuff films she bought at a truck stop. You know what I mean? Like, that's not yeah. a horror movie. That's a whole different crime. Yeah, it's, it's the difference between a, an artistic representation of violence and actual violence, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, no matter how many people Jason and Freddy killed, well, you know what? They didn't actually kill anyone. Freddy Krueger's never murdered a person. That's that's not real yeah, violence. She's, There's zero she's violence not, she's not eating, in these horror movies. She's not eating popcorn and watching Faces of Death and giggling. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, this guy this guy has some deep problems and he needs psychological help and you also need to leave him probably for your own safety, you know what I mean? 
I yeah, I remember um, every time I went to the because uh, I, you know I still love horror movies to this day. But back in the day when there were rental stores, I would go there and I'd look I'd look through all the films and Faces of Death always sounded so appealing back then when I didn't know better. And I was like, oh, real deaths. And I bought it and I brought it home and I was all looking forward to it being like the coolest of the cool stuff ever, right? It's like not even special effects; it's the real thing. And I'm watching it and I, it doesn't feel cool. It just feels really uncomfortable. Mm. And I never even finished sitting all the way through it like what got me to stop is when they were um killing this monkey to eat its brains yeah by bashing it over the head while it's alive and i'm like oh that's that's just really that's just really uncomfortable also if you're gonna eat the brains maybe don't bash the head in i guess there's that too i'm just saying if you want to kill something quickly and well never i'm not going to go into how to kill something quickly and humanely just don't bashing it over the head is not the optimal way to oh uh, no it was still alive when they started to eat it Jesus Christ. Yeah, see, so that's not porn. That's your husband needs help. You should probably leave him. Also, right. you've got to wonder how many videos of you are out there on the internet that he's put out there for other people. Well, do you think he would do that? Yes. I was actually thinking earlier in this that maybe if he came across a video of his wife out on the internet that he would stop and that you could... No, it's, it's the same kind of problem as like people who are pedophiles. Like, Do you really think that they wouldn't like to make their own pedophile movies? Well, I mean, maybe if they came across, like, their own... Well, I was about to say, some of them probably would film their own children. Hmm. Yeah, so that, but... yeah, that person's fucked up. Uh, leave his ass, girl. Leave his ass. Uh, I would say just try to make it abundantly clear to him that you're not cool with this. If you are certain that he knows exactly how you feel and continues to do it, then take Peter's advice and just GTFO. Yeah. But, like, nah, you're into some really fucked up shit. Like, this is not cool. Here's here's one. Um, you ready for this? You're gonna love this new this dear Amy. <clears throat> All right. And he says, uh, "Dear Amy, I'm a Trump fan. Ugh. I just started a new job. Every single TV at work is playing CNN, <laughs> even though Fox three times the ratings and MSNBC two times the ratings have more followers." Uh, Janae, here's the thing. I knew this coming in. Okay, go ahead. I was just going to say, here's the thing about Fox having so much more ratings than all the other networks. This goes all the other networks are variants of the truth and reality. Fox is just for this particular brand of insanity. So one entire side is just Fox News and the entire other side, the reality side of things, is every other news network combined. Also, some of them have problems, some, none of them are perfect, but at least they're trying to tell you the truth. They're trying, even if sometimes they fall short. Also, ratings don't fucking Fox matter. Fox News, meanwhile, doesn't give a fuck about the Because um, that's, the not, that's not how people get their news anymore unless you're old people, and of course Fox has high... I don't even know if right, it's, it's high ratings because it's just old people, and that's how old people get the news. Yeah, that's not but, I mean, anybody in the modern. But age I mean, that's also like uh, uh, every conservative added together is Fox News and its rating, whereas um, liberals, people in the middle, everyone else, normal people, that's every other network is divided up. So he says uh, with that population. But so, anyway, yeah, he says uh, I knew this coming in. However, now I have heard one teammate consistently speak also, against Trump. Also, also Fox does not have three times the ratings of CNN. In fact, sometimes CNN surpasses it. But I digress. Yeah, well, it's not often, but it has surpassed it. Yeah, when they were doing that whole thing on the the Malaysian plane. Oh God, damn them! <laughs> yeah, that's when I stopped watching CNN and will never watch them again because of that bullshit. <laughs> They uh, lost me forever I enjoyed, because of that fucking Malaysian airline. I enjoyed bullshit. that three month period when you were just like, I just want to watch the news. And every day it was another theory on the Malaysian airplane. And you would call me and go, God damn it! They tricked me! They started another news story and veered back into the Malaysian Airways plane. That still yeah. hasn't been found. And they never, it, there was never any updates on it, though. That, that's what was driving me insane, is that there were zero updates. We knew exactly as much at the end of the three- or six-month period that we did on day one, which is the plane went missing. That's why my working theory is that freaking Wolf Blitzer, he's the one that stole the plane, and it's in his basement. He hid it. He hid it. He has the plane. He stole it so that they can report on it forever without ever being able to find it. That's what I think happened. But anyway, so he says, uh, I knew this coming in. However, I have heard one teammate consistently speak against Trump. I, like many conservatives, have a hard time rebutting him 
not because of any physical reaction because it could hinder my position within the company. Oh yeah, I get it. So you're you're a man, so you can handle yourself physically, but you're worried about your position within the company. Also sounds like a Trump supporter. I'm an alpha male. Yeah. Also okay? you're, not a, you're not a conservative. Trump doesn't represent conservatism. You're just a fucking bootlicker. Exactly. Or um, a um a, or a goose stepper. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, but it is a serious issue. Like, what do you do when you have political differences with people at work? Um, here's the thing. Uh, just do what we all do. Uh, if you can't have a civil conversation, just ignore it or don't talk about it. Yeah, yeah. And perhaps if you're uh, worried that it could hinder your position at the company, that's not a company you should be at. Or you should re-examine your, uh, pol- your, your leanings in general. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing, is that if you can never think of a, a rebuttal to any point someone's making, maybe you're the one in the wrong. Yeah. But, um, I mean, uh, but politics really is just tribalism these days, and right. I feel like they have revealed this more today than at ever at any other point in time, because no matter what Trump does, they still stick by him and they still stay by Team Red because they're tribalists. They don't actually care about the policies. They don't actually have high ideas. They don't actually have moral standards. Yeah, it's my they, team. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just their team no matter what. They'll never even consider, you know, jumping boat, jumping ship. Now, I like I did see a video today of this guy in a store and he was I guess wearing a bunch of Trump stuff and this guy's like the guy in there's asking him to leave and he's like he's asking me to leave and blah 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 and like you know being smarmy. And the guy just flips out and is like, get the fuck out, you fucking racist. And, like, from all I can see on the video, basically the guy behind the counter is calling him racist because he's wearing Trump stuff. My whole thing is this. Uh, You know, if someone supports Trump and is wearing, like, Trump gear, whatever, man. I'm not going to associate with you. But at the same time, like, I'm also not going to have a fucking meltdown because you're in the store. Uh, But at the same time, they wear that Trump gear to get a reaction and then they get smarmy when they get a reaction. And it's like, well, I mean, you could do the same thing with Nazi paraphernalia and be like, what? I'm just wearing a Hindu good luck symbol. It's like, yeah, but the <laughs> yep. fucking thing you're wearing is deeply offensive to a ton of people. Like, because, uh, yeah, like, I don't know, man. There's, just all, there's a lot of anger about a lot of the wrong things, I feel like, um, and not enough anger about the right stuff. Yeah. Uh, you sound a swastika, it's a manji, you see. It's like no one can tell the difference. Nobody can tell the difference. Everyone assumes it's a swastika. As far as they're concerned, it's a swastika. No one's going to cross-analyze it. Yeah, I'm not a racist. GTFO. Well, you should probably re-examine your fucking t-shirt wear. Um, it's like, uh, it, if you sit down at a table with racists, you're a racist. There's an old German saying that, um, what do you call a guy who is absolutely 100% not a Nazi that goes and sits down... Uh, at a table of nine Nazis. Nazi adjacent? Y- y- yeah, call it a table of ten Nazis. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's like just, you got to be aware of your associations. That's And that's the thing I don't like that a lot of Trump supporters do, is they're trying to fence ride the association where they're going, well, I agree that he's, you know, morally reprehensible, but I think that is like, nope, like, you either are in that with, and I'm not even trying to be tribal, I just mean with him, you either have to be in his camp or you have to be out of it because... Uh, his is a very specific and a very dangerous camp for the country to be in, so you can't fence right on this guy. Yeah, you can't be like, well, you know, Hitler certainly wanted to, the best for Germany, so I yeah. agree with some of his... Um, oh, uh, I mean, like, know, Hitler, almost... Hitler was against smoking, so maybe we should... Um, no, 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 you're with... either all in on Nazism or yeah, all out. With almost, just... with almost any other any other American politician or American president you could fence ride, you know? You could be like, I don't like Carter, but I support some of his... his uh, you know, his his policy, sure. I don't like Reagan, but I support some of his policies. Okay, I think Reagan was a monster, but uh, during the Reagan era, uh, what do you call it, um, the inflation rate did go down, and so did unemployment. So, argue that if you will, right? Right. Well, here's the thing, like, it's never been so profoundly one-sided before, yeah. where we have someone that just has zero redeeming redeemable qualities so this is where it's never been more blatant that so many people just don't actually give a fuck about these things like um oh, i believe in this policy and that policy and obama is doing this and it's like yeah but now that we have trump you're a bird bird hillary like yeah exactly yeah. um so but, yeah uh, he, he's indefensible and if you back him into a corner they'll just start complaining about hillary I mean, I think you have the right to wear whatever clothes you want and say whatever you want, but again, that doesn't protect you from the repercussions of possibly losing your job 
uh, you know what I mean, or being kicked out of places because they're private institutions, and that's yeah. Their I mean, because right. your clothing certainly counts as speech, and the freedom of speech is not freedom from consequences, and. Uh, a private business can choose to serve whoever they want. Just ask the cake industry. Yeah. Um, I don't know why the guy behind the counter didn't just simply do as he says, call the police and be like, I've asked this gentleman to leave. He refuses. Uh, and now he's trespassing. Because any private business can just do that, you know? You are. Uh, and if you don't leave, you're trespassing. Uh, yeah, so that's problem. So I wanted to get to, um, I saw a neat little trick today. That made me mad, and this is going to tie into the greater abortion debate. That uh, oh, wait, got... was that the was that the end of the Dear Amy? Yes, just the yeah, that okay. was that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, neat trick that will tie into um... the greater abortion debate that has gotten so much worse since last time. Yeah, last time when we talked about this, we thought that we had said the final word on it. Nope, Alabama decided to take a nice jaunt back to the 1850s. Uh, well, it's like every time we think we've come up with a final word on an issue. It's like a dumb person with a gun, and they go, it's not loaded. Blam! Okay, now it's not loaded. <laughs> blam, blam, blam! I'm like, ah, fucking put it down! Like, yep. uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, was it fucking Alabama just passed this crazy abortion law? I think Louisiana's about to pass one. Fucking Ohio is doing some shit. There's a bunch of places. Yeah, uh, Georgia drafted one. I don't oh, know yeah. where that's going, but Alabama yeah, no, Georgia, passed theirs. Yeah, I think Georgia passed theirs. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's bad. So this um, this really will relitigate Roe versus Wade, that's, and, that's what, and that's, I guarantee you that everyone's trying to push for getting Kavanaugh to be able to help flip it and outlaw abortions across America. That's what they're trying to do. So the thing about it is these draconian anti-abortion bills are just fucking lighten up like a pinball machine all throughout these states um and uh so uh tommy lauren uh you know um nazi barbie the blonde haired yeah. fair skin just you know uh conservative firebrand that just attacks everything all the time on the wrong side of the issue because it makes her money and yeah. old hateful pat robertson uh televangelist who blamed i think gays for hurricanes <laughs> you know what I mean? Some shit like that. Pat Robertson's always one of those just like, he's like 90 million years old. He's like, well, I think, I think when a that... woman, if a woman steps outside the kitchen and gets raped, you know, it's because she's outside of her place. <laughs> you wouldn't expect a yeah. cat to pull a sled in an Iditarod and you shouldn't expect a woman not to get raped outside the kitchen. Like that kind of shit, I, right? I, actually, Peter and I once wrote an entire play about cats pulling sleds in an Iditarod, and it turned out fine for everyone involved. I'm pretty sure yeah. they all died of hypothermia, though. I think the cats lived. I think the people in the play died. Yeah, the cats are fine. Yeah. Um, so uh, so these fucking notorious douchebags have both come out and said that Alabama's abortion law is way too restrictive, right? And so yes. everyone's like, oh, my God, this is crazy. Their law is so bad that even they're speaking out against it. Wow, you know? And uh, it's a fucking trick, and everyone fell for it. And I'll tell you why it's a trick. Go ahead. They're both smart enough to know that all of these anti-abortion laws are uh, ploys to get this to the Supreme Court, like you said, to overturn Roe versus Wade. So yes. if you're a conservative and you want to increase your fan base and kind of look like a good guy and have future talking points to defend to go i'm not anti-woman i was against the alabama you know heartbeat ah, bill. You, you think that they're on uh they're trying to be on the right side of history just in this one case for right. um all future discussions basically taking okay. a basically they're taking a stand where it doesn't fucking matter so later yeah. on uh maybe i you mean because remember when they were voting on rape them off to uh be a scotus yeah uh allegedly um Co collins from uh maine said you know don't worry it's not like he'll overturn roe versus wade or anything so you know she was voting in favor of him and what i really want to do is see him overturn roe versus wade so i can ride up to uh, i can ride up to what's her name susan collins i believe so I, right right up to her house and be like so you said that it was okay to vote for him because he wouldn't overturn roe versus wade well now he's done it so do you get to retract your vote or are we still stuck with him despite you being so terribly wrong susan collins is an uncle tom um she is uh what's his name uh from um django unchained uh uh why, why can't i think of his name now nick fury the actor oh um samuel jackson yeah she's samuel L. jackson from django unchained she's the house slave 
that is a traitor to everyone else. I'm tired of all these motherfucking traitors in this motherfucking something another. Um, I really like, someone put up a really smart thing I, I liked once uh, about the whole Georgia heartbeat bill where they're like, a baby's going to hurt in six weeks and now you can't they, kill it after that. And someone they, goes, yeah, you they know. Literally, they, they literally said that it's okay to get an abortion so long as you get it before you're aware that you're pregnant. Right. After you know, though, then you can't. And it's like, what the fuck? How are you supposed to do that? People on life support still have heartbeats and they get the plug pulled on them all the time. And I was like, man, that's a really great meet the fuckers moment where you're like, I have a heartbeat, Greg. Can you abort me? I um what I, have, I, have nipples, I enjoyed Greg. was this one me? argument. <laughs> what I enjoyed though was this um argument someone made that uh, if they're counted as a full person at you know after they get a heartbeat, then can you get insurance on them like life insurance on them? And then if you miscarry or something, uh, the insurance company has to pay out in full. If yeah. so, then you should definitely start doing that. No, absolutely, because that's a problem. Because, like, yeah, because it's tragic to miscarry, but if you get a few million dollars for it, then you know that sort of softens the blow. Trying to declare personhood at that early of a stage is insane. Um, yeah. And the argument, I think, is going to come they down... They said it's basically... Uh, I mean, it, that's basically like saying that we should make cancer treatments... Um, Murder. Illegal, because yeah. yeah, it's it's murder because that's a lump of cells that's independently living inside of you. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's insane and it's 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 passed by people that don't understand um, pregnancy at all. Uh, I believe one of the guys who voted on it was the same senator that wanted the tampon machine the tampon machine removed from the women's bathroom in his office because he Why? thought that tampons were sex toys. What? <laughs> This is he true. thought that they were just masturbating in the bathroom? Yeah, he thought that they were just diddling themselves with dry cotton tampons because he didn't know what a woman's period was. And I'm sure he calls I mean... it a woman's period. <laughs> the, um, God, who was the uh, the person that said, uh, in the occurrence of legitimate rape, a woman's body has the ability to uh, shut the yeah, whole thing down? Are, I, I want to say that was Grassley, but I can't remember. They, they, they were trying to argue that um, you can't get pregnant from rape because you can just, you can turn it off. You can decide not to get pregnant. Um, yeah, this is why we need comprehensive sex ed. Also, I think we need to send our congressmen and senators to a sex ed class. We really do, because they don't understand it. They really don't. I mean, don't. the bigger problem is it's because we've gutted scientists, because it used to be you'd bring in scientists and experts on things to come in and, like, testify. They, Trump fired all the real scientists from uh, the White House and the administration. Like, yeah, but we've We been... have no real scientists in government anymore. They've all been fired, replaced by, you know, Exxon. We've, well, you've been cutting science funding for a long time because it interferes with profits. Yeah, yeah. You know? Because what happens is science comes up with... Um, new cheaper easier alternatives and that fucks over businesses that make tons of money in the old shitty ways of doing things like you do know that we could have way way better internet these days but we don't because the current internet companies are constantly fighting people that are trying to invent and innovate new ways they're really trying to shut them down same way the oil companies are trying to attack um wind power solar power and all that other stuff um, they you know, because of... what we currently have is what's making them money, and they don't want to pay the cost of transitioning over to making a different type of internet or energy or whatever. It's the same reason so... we still use magnetic strips on our fucking credit cards, which have been around since the '70s, which also is so easy to hack. Yeah, everyone, all the cards are chipped nowadays. But yeah, but they still that... got they're chipped, but they still got strips. You know what I mean? And strips is yep. where, are where thieves can steal your data. They are. Um, but yeah, it's it's dumb, and so it's going to go to the Supreme Court, and I guess the court's going to have to uh, possibly declare when personhood begins. Good um, God! Yeah, which is just like uh, I still think I still think they need to stick with Roe versus Wade, where it's a private medical procedure, and you can't restrict people's access to. And that's one of the big fights about, I guess, against healthcare too, is that if we provide healthcare, we have to provide it to everybody, and we provide it to everybody. Uh, abortion's legal, so everybody has access to abortion and contraception. Yeah, that's what uh, a lot of people were bitching about with uh, the, Ob the Obamacare. Here's the thing, man. Like, if you don't want an abortion, don't fucking get one. But you don't have the right to dictate what somebody else does with their own body and their own life. And they're stuck on this whole, it's murder! Well, you know, the state uh, executing somebody without being 100% sure they're guilty is also murder, but we're fine with that. Yeah. 
you know, it's, uh, I like what someone said, they go, this actually doesn't make abortion illegal because senators and congressmen and all these people will still be able to get abortions for their wives and their mistresses. What it does is it uh, keeps people trapped in the poverty cycle and yeah. uh, basically penalizes abortion for poor people. Yeah, and if you don't believe that that's literally what they're trying to do, oh, they were asked about what about um, eggs that are fertilized in a laboratory outside of a woman's body, and they, you know, could those be aborted if they're like in the process of growing and it reaches a certain point? And they said, well, of course that could because that's outside of a woman's body, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, their whole idea and understanding of science is very weird, and like I don't. It's just a, it's a weird thing to control women, and like I wonder too if they don't think that it'll actually get overturned, and so they're all it's just a big posturing thing for them so they can win points with the fucking conservative voters. Basically, but you know, I mean, Jesus, Jesus, it's like in the meantime, it's t a terrifying reminder to uh, every sane person out there that the GOP are exactly who they are, which is a white male-centric, uh, wealthy overlord-loving group of deplorables. Well, somebody said so we should... So please remember that the next time you go to vote Democrat and someone's like, well, you know, the Democrats aren't really for women. It's like, yeah, well, the GOP definitely is against them, so Yeah, well, I've, never heard, I've never heard in the, Demo in the Democratic Party call women hosts. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, and then there's all these other things about these states that are restricting abortion are also making it like you get less time for being a rapist than you do for getting an abortion under these new laws. Yeah, be, uh, getting an abortion is um, a 99-year prison sentence. Yeah. Um, I think that we need to bring back some creative sentencing. Like if you're a rapist, uh, we just cut your twig and berries off, you know? Um, I think right. I'm, still, I'm still I'm still a fan of catapulting because that's just a really funny way to execute someone it is weird right like that's an interesting i like i still like exile i think for really rich uh like politicians and rich people who commit crimes you know there's no fair way to punish them within the country uh right. yeah i think you just physically that's... exile them to another country and cut them off from all their possessions over here send them to mexico once they know that they're going to be sentenced to mexico then i'm sure they'll suddenly be super interested in um given um mexicans easier access to america yeah you know polluters and stuff like that i think we make them go live in flint <laughs> you know but which like, still doesn't have access to clean water by the way all right. these years later yeah we haven't fixed that yet all i think there was i think jaden jaden smith or somebody was like i want to fix this and they go well at least somebody's not a fucking monster uh, yeah, yeah, the fucking Avengers Endgame made billions of dollars, but we can't fix Flint. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's um in three weeks it made two point five billion dollars, and Flint... the entire runtime of uh, Avatar was two point seven billion. That's a lifetime gross for Avatar, which I'm actually happy about because uh, what's his name? Was it James Cameron that made Avatar? Yes. Uh, yeah, he was like, oh, Endgame, really? How many superhero movies do we need? And yeah, I, well, it's about to overtake your movie, so now you're no longer going to be the um, the best director or the most profitable director in the world. Also, <laughs> James Cameron, fuck you, fuck Avatar. That movie sucked. How many times do yeah. we need to see Dances with Wolves remade, James Cameron? Fuck you. I hate people that take... I hate just, people in, like, an a... industry that shit on the success of something that's not them, especially when they made an inferior product, you know? Yeah, a live-action Fern Gully. Yeah, yeah, which Fern Gully was far superior to Avatar. Yar. Um... Fucking ugh. It's going to be a fucking superhero movie. Fuck your blue cat people. <laughs> oh my god. Right. That's me. That's how I know that I want to get away from somebody. Before there was Trump, there was like, I loved Avatar, and I just scoot on. <laughs> I just scoot on out of the fucking room. Oh my god. Could you imagine like when Avatar 2 is coming out and someone has like a, uh, an Avatar 2 shirt on and a MAGA hat? That'd uh, be like P Peter's personal hell to be stuck in a car with someone like that. Uh, well, I wouldn't be. I drive the car, so I would be like, get the fuck out, or I will get you <laughs> out. You know what I mean? Get out, or we're both going over the bridge. Uh, speaking of get out, uh, it may be time to get out of the United States, because uh, Trump is trying to use this new, not new, this old statute to remove migrants from the United States using troops, and it's called the... Uh, the uh, hold on, uh, I just had it. The Insurrection Act. 
that's insane. Right. I, I, yeah. don't, I haven't heard about that. What the fuck? Yeah, it's a thing the president can do for uh, mm-hmm. national security and stuff like that. Oh, that's what a second national emergency is about. The Insurrection cool. Act is an umbrella term for a series Ugh. of statutes that date back to the founding. Basically, if you need the military to put down an insurrection in within the United States, he wants to use it to remove illegal immigrants from the United States. Fuck um, him. Yeah, but uh, and president. Do you remember? Uh, how angry Obama's immigration policies made us, and Obama's a saint compared to this monster. Yeah. Well, uh, here's the problem with it. I mean, it makes sense when they started it because it's just like, you, you know... know... The, the GOP were once told that they're never going to be able to pull ahead again unless they win over Hispanics, and Trump has done everything in his power to alienate them. He is the far no, opposite of what they should no, be doing. No, not quite. you got to remember... Um, just because you're an immigrant does not mean that you are a liberal, and a lot of immigrant groups uh, are uh, very conservative. And yes, a lot I know. Of, they're, um, they're what, like 27% conservative? And a lot of Hispanics hate that, hate other Hispanics. Um, and uh, Oh, you think the, they're going to be cool with um, other Hispanics being ex- exiled? Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. They're not going to see it as uh, Nicks are going to come for me because uh, yeah, exa- white people just see all brown people as brown. Exactly. <laughs> I think that we tend to look at immigrant groups as a monolith, which is a mis- dangerous mistake. It's like, whoa, whoa, I'm from Puerto Rico. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, you but know, you look Mexican, so you're going to Mexico. Hey, it's, fuck off. It's the same. It's the same thing with uh, with a lot of like uh, you know like a lot of Muslim immigrants. There are a lot of very conservative uh, groups in those immigrant groups, which is weird that the GOP is not dating more immigrant groups because they would look like they had turned but really they'd be pulling in more conservative voters but yeah you can't you can't view immigrant groups as monoliths they're not speaking Um, of monoliths i um i heard an interesting thing recently you know why there's been so many more people trying to um immigrate or uh, get over the american border lately because it's the only place we're not bombing (laughs) it's um because they heard that uh, they heard about Trump's policies of trying to like lock up America and build a wall so they can never get in. And so they feel like this is their last chance to get into America. So it's encouraging far, far more people than ever before to try and flood over the border. Yeah, now I do agree that I think... So our, Trump's making the problem much worse. I do agree. I think that the um, the amnesty thing... Not amnesty. What's the word I'm looking for? Where you come over and you say I'm being persecuted? Oh, uh, asylum. I do think the asylum system needs to be fixed. I do think that... I, I think it needs to be fixed and that it needs to be way, way easier to get in and get asylum because right now it's horrifically broken. Like, yeah. it's really bad. Well, the problem was I was listening to a thing with some Border Patrol agents and it was just like we would catch these people and they would walk up to us and they would just be like, hey, I want to declare asylum. And then you got to pick them up and take them to the thing. And like, so it was like they felt like they were doing catch and release. They weren't really defending the border. Um, but it's just like, well, then get the, then work on the efficiency of the asylum courts. You know what I mean? Like, get those mm-hmm. motherfuckers humming, get more judges. You know what I mean? Like, get them moving faster so people can be checked out as I either get asylum or I don't very quickly. All right. And personally, I don't believe in borders. So I think they should all just be able to come over however they want. But, of course, I'm an outlier. Most Democrats do believe in safe borders and whatever. I just don't see how borders make us safer. But, but um, exactly, they don't. But um, as far as uh, immigration goes, right now America has one of the worst immigration programs ever because yeah. you basically have to be phenomenally wealthy, yes. like well-connected. You have to have lots of money, lots of means. You have to know people who know people. You have to have people in America write letters for you. Like there's this long, long process. Like even uh, John Bain, when he was coming over from the UK, from Europe, right? He's not even Hispanic. He's coming. He's a white guy from Europe coming to America. It took him five years, thousands and thousands of dollars. He had to marry an American and he had to have people like in large corporations write letters for him to vouch for him he had to have famous people my write favorite him letters of recommendation and even then it was a pain in the ass for him to get over here and it took forever if you're just a normal bloke you'll never get into america my it'd be like 25 years my favorite story was like back in the and, formation of the and country yet people keep saying that it's oh they're just letting everyone in that's not the case that is fucking back not the case. back during the formation of the country you know the uh comanche and these other indian tribes used to raid into america and yeah. and then we would chase them and they would just they would they would run back over the border to Mexico and then we would stop at the border and then the Native Americans would be like, Look, white man stops at river for no reason. 
we can raid easily into it. So it's funny. So they would raid into America, and we'd be like, "You come back on this side of the border, I tell you what." And then like uh, later on, they would raid into Mexico and then run over back into the United States, and the Mexicans would be like, "You come back on this side of the river, I tell you what." Um, and then like Wonder. they were just like, "This is great." Uh, we could raid both sides, but then like we, <laughs> we, but then we all attacked them at the same time and genocided their people. Um, that wasn't the funny part of the story. The other part was uh, the genocide was sad. Aww. I just, I just like that Native Americans being like, "Really, you're not going to cross the invisible border to get me?" Okay. <laughs> um, so this whole thing, the Insurrection Act, uh, here's and it's very broad and very scary, and this is why we really need to trim a lot of these laws. Uh, it says, uh, whenever the president considers that unlawful obstructions, combinations, or assemblages, or rebellions against the authority of the United States make it impractical to enforce the laws of the United States in any state by the ordinary course of judicial proceedings, he may call into federal service, such as of the militia of any state, and use any armed forces as he considers necessary to enforce those laws or suppress the rebellion. Meaning, basically, any time the president considers, that's the... T- any time the president's like, oh, I think these are obstructions, he can just call in the army. So this is it. We're fucked. This is the end of the United States and the beginning of a dictatorship. <clears throat> when the president is able to call in the military because he considers uh, an assemblage that is unlawful, that's it. Like, federal troops, re-election, what are you going to do? How are you going to stop him? Nothing you can do about it, folks. This is fucking terrifying. This is civil war. Um, This is like, and I see why I'm like, this is blood in the fucking streets, man. Like, the only thing saving us from him is his own fucking uh, inability to actually do anything. Yeah, like, thank God he's incredibly stupid. He's so stupid he can't even abuse his powers properly. He's trying like hell. He's doing everything he can. All these presidents he's setting, it's just like, we're done, man. Like, you're going to call in the military to get rid of migrants, and then while the military's there, how do you ever make them leave? What if they decide to stay? What if we lock down cities just because? Well, lots you know, of people would say, they can't do that, and I'd say, yeah, well, who's going to stop them? He you? Can, he can lock down New York, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, I mean, I don't think we're going to have enough uh, soldiers here stateside to actually be doing that if we're sending 120,000 of them over to Iran to fight in a brand new war. That's the other thing, too. You know, we were talking before the podcast about how a lot of Trump's Obama uh, tweets are actually things he does. And one of them that scared me, like, was like, Hey, look out, Republicans. Obama might start a war with Iran just to get reelected. And now we're talking about War with Iran, which, by the way, John Bolton masturbates to this. Yeah, like, that's... Jesus. First, we knew from the get-go that John Bolton was the most hawkish of all war hawks. He yearns for nothing more than America to be in endless quagmire wars with the entire Middle East. That's all he cares about. There's no point to this. There's no purpose to this. He just showed up and said, I recommend we do this. But it's like, why? No evidence. Who cares? Do it! And so he sketched out the plan to send 120,000 soldiers over there. And they're already calling all non-essential U.S. personnel out of Iran. So we're already you mean out of Iraq. to set up. Yeah, out of Iraq. Yeah, yeah. out of Iraq. Out of Iraq. Because so we're already setting up to uh, go to uh, to more war in the Middle East now. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing is, like, I'm teaching right now in my classes. We're getting into the uh, Iraq War. Um, right. And we covered the first Gulf War, and then we're moving into the next one and all that. And it's just like, it's a quagmire that's not a thing you need to get into, you know? Right. But, um, I mean, and this is where, and I had said this to you earlier, this is where I get annoyed with Stephen Colbert, because he said, you know, he's telling it as a joke, but I disagree with the joke's premise, because John Bolton came up with this idea, and Trump said, no, I don't think I'm going to, I won't, I don't think I want to do this, I'd rather not. But... So Colbert's joke was, um, you know, I'm sure this will never be taken out of context, but I agree with Donald Trump. Or no, it was, uh, I'm glad we have Donald Trump for a president. That was the joke. I'm glad we have him for a president. The premise of the joke being is that any other president might have gone along and done this. And this is where I disagree. Any other president would not have picked John Bolton to be Secretary of Defense. Yeah. This is only a thing because Trump picked the worst possible person. 
he only picks people that do the opposite of what their position should do. Like the head of the EPA wants to pollute everything. The person who's in charge of defense wants to make America the most vulnerable it's ever been by getting us into more endless wars to get even more of our people killed. The problem, the problem with, uh, um, there, there was a fucking great, uh, onion article where it says a bloody John Bolton stumbles into the Capitol building, clutching, clutching his chest saying, I've just been shot by Iran. Yeah. Yeah, it's like number one. I think another war in the Middle East is a bad idea because I think we go we go into these countries not understanding the situation on the ground with no real plan to stabilize the country. Uh huh. Uh, and then we go like we we're like every time we've gone into a Middle East war, with the exception of the first Persian Gulf War, uh, we're like that Pikachu meme where it's just like <laughs> goes in goes into another another war we don't understand the country. Uh, Things fall apart. Uh, the United States surprised face. Yeah, and um, I was talking to uh, Benefield earlier, and he was saying, "Yeah, well, thank God, you know, Congress will stop Trump from uh, doing this war if he decides to do it." And they I, can't. He has full control of the military. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, actually, um, George Bush um, set the precedent that uh, the president does not need Congress's approval to go to war. They set that precedent so... when we went to Vietnam because if we don't actually declare war on Iran. Just like we never declared war uh, the second time, we didn't actually declare war on Afghanistan or on Iraq. Yeah, then, we just go to war without calling it war. Then yeah, then Congress like, like why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Yeah, yeah. But it's your troops. Vietnam oh. technically was never a war; oh. it was a police action. I, oh, and the other thing about um, the other thing that Colbert's joke hinges on is that Trump actually does not want to go to war. And here's the thing. The only reason we would think he doesn't want to go to war is because he said so. But as we all know, Trump only tells the truth 3% of the time. So uh, his word means nothing. It's just hot air. It's literally meaningless. Anytime Trump tells you his position on anything, you can't believe it one way or the other. Maybe he's not for war. Maybe he is. His word is empty. His words are empty. They mean nothing. And it's, yeah, a war should be a last option. And also, as not only is this not a last option, why the fuck is it an option? Period. Because what the fuck did Iran do? The problem with Iran is so. From what I understand, and like for anybody that listens to this show and is from the Middle East or understands the situation better than I do, please, I apologize about this, but this is my basic understanding. Um, The two major powers that uh, that kind of vie, I think, for regional control or regional supremacy uh, is Iran and Saudi Arabia, and they hate each other. And we are way too close to the Saudis. Um, and the problem... Oh, you think that Trump just wants to back his uh, wealthy benefactors in Saudi Arabia? Because you do know he has strong ties to them, Yeah, right? they 100% support that. Um, and so they're both... Both countries are exporters of extremism and stuff like that. With Iran, it's kind of tragic because of us in the 70s, we deposed their democratically elected government because we didn't like it. Um, yeah. And, you know, uh, they ended up having a revolution, uh, and it was all, and that's kind of the Iran way of the day, because we fucking backed them into a corner, and then we, we hammer on them, and then we had a peace deal, and we back out of it, so it's just like, um, destabilizing another country in the Middle East is a bad idea. Um, you know, I mean, like I said, Iraq is insane. I think we just, it's gotten so bad in Afghanistan now, we're not even reporting on what's going, we're like, there, there's like a blackout on what's happening right now, because, uh, we started negotiating with the Taliban, uh, which I'm fine for negotiations, but the problem was we negotiated them. Yeah. So we started negotiating them because there's the government and then there's the Taliban government. So you have a shadow government next to the real government, right? Right. And the problem is the Taliban said at any point they would be glad to negotiate, but they won't recognize the, uh, you know, legal government of Afghanistan. Right. So we started negotiating with them when Trump came into office and they were like, we don't want the actual government in the room. And we were like, fine. So basically, we undid all the work, any of the work we had done in Afghanistan by legitimizing the Taliban and delegitimizing the other government. Um, and so basically, they feel like they've won in Afghanistan um, because now they're the ones we're negotiating with. Uh, and then. Come on, okay. America. Let's go police the wild. Iraq's a fucking mess. You know, Syria's a fucking mess. Uh, fucking Yemen is destroyed like uh, it's fucking it's bad and just getting involved in another pointless war with one of the only countries that's still stable is a terrible idea yeah. speaking of Trump uh, escalating 
new wars. Uh, the trade war with China is really heating up this week. Oh my god, yeah, he's declaring more so, tariffs, like... Like, he declared more tariffs, so they got annoyed and declared tariffs, and he declared more. And what people don't seem to understand is that when Trump does tariffs, it doesn't... It, it makes Americans pay for it, not China. Like, if you don't know how the tariffs work, basically it's a um, it's an import tax so that whenever we buy goods from China, uh, we pay more money for those goods, and that extra money goes to the, the government, right? Yeah, but we also so, sell a bunch of stuff to China, and so then they just stop buying our shit. Right. Because they can just be annoyed that we're um, tax... Because, because yeah. the, there are these extra tariffs, we just buy less from them. So now they're not making as much money because they're not able to sell as much. They're not making more money off these tariffs, of course. The government's, of course, making bank off it. And that's more money for Ben Carson to buy better desks with. There's a bunch but, of... There's um, a bunch but of anyway, like so, farmers... this, so this really does hurt America's bottom line. And this is badly hurting farmers. Oh, my God. And yeah. Trump was saying, these patriotic farmers... Which, um, of course, a lot of them are going to need, like, bailouts because Trump's fucking them. But someone pointed out that whenever um, pe uh, people in or African-Americans in low-income areas need uh, government assist assistance, uh, Trump insults them, ridicules them. They're all welfare queens yeah. and that type of stuff. But when white people do it out in, um, in crop country, they're total patriotic people. Okay? Patriots. Yeah. So, um, you know, they're just pointing out, like, the language difference there. But... The problem with farmers is, like, it anyway. doesn't take much to fuck you as a farmer, you know? Um, Absolutely not. I uh, I grew up in farmer territory, and I've seen them get, like, badly fucked in recent years. Like, one guy that had to sell everything that he and his family had ever worked for and had... Con and had worked on for the last hundred years, right? Yeah. Or more than a hundred years. And they lost it all and just, like... In a couple years' time, he went like five million dollars in debt yeah. because um, he had like a bad crop and then was just not able to recover from it. It doesn't take much because you got to get the shit in the ground and then planted and harvested in a specific amount of time. And if you don't, you are screwed. Um, yeah, and cl climate change is really what fucked him hard there. But no one locally actually admits that because then they have to admit to climate change being real. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like, there are people that are like, uh, wait, what about export? I got five, I got five, I got five million tons of soybeans that are going to China. What am I going to do with five million tons of soybeans now? Like, yeah, it's, we're headed for, uh, the one thing I hope that will save us is I hope the pending economic collapse that's going to occur will get people angry enough because it is true when the economy is good, we give the president all the praise and when it's bad, we blame the president whether it's historically a president's fault or not. Um, so I'm hoping that this will land squarely on the shoulders of Trump uh, because nothing will turn people more than having to eat their shoes. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> well, I always say eat the rich. But um, China's, like, getting pissed off now, and they're saying you need to stop at... Oh, I shouldn't do the voice. You need to stop acting so stupid, Trump. Uh, and I'm just like, it's not an act. He really is this stupid. And so they've started to retaliate with um, tariffs of their own, so Trump escalates things and does even more tariffs, and they're sort of going back and forth until uh, both economies explode. It'll be fun. Yeah, uh, I just wonder if we get to podcast through the apocalypse. Uh, I hope so. When the revolution comes, we will not be spared. Maybe. So, um, it's like a national emergency. Da, 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 da. Um, so I try to um, completely abandon any semblance that we're uh, fair and balanced um, newscasters with headlines like my next one. Uh, Trump the homicidal maniac murders more children news. Did he actually eat kids this time in front of Congress? <laughs> Maybe. A, uh, a two-and-a-half-year-old Guatemalan boy apprehended at the U.S.-Mexican border died Tuesday night in El Paso after several weeks in the hospital. He is the fourth, fourth child to die after being taken into U.S. custody since December. Well, with these kids, what are we doing with them where they die? They put them in baby cages separated from their parents. That's extremely taxing to their mental health which in turn causes makes them be physically unhealthy plus these aren't these are worse conditions than walking across the desert apparently because they were fine walking across the desert but could not survive the baby cages and what specifically are we doing to them you ask pete we don't know because they stopped allowing reporters inside of the baby cage factories well i do know that i knew two things we're doing to them number one apparently we're fucking them 
Um, because sexual abuse is rampant in these uh, fucking detention centers. Uh, two, apparently we're not feeding or watering them because uh, there's been a couple kids died of like dehydration and stuff. And like the Border Patrol was like, What? You gotta feed them and water them? <laughs> well, I'll be damned. I put out some newspapers for them. Ain't that enough? You know, this. Did that for my cat and it was fine. This was on me. You know what? I totally forgot to give that little feverish Guatemalan girl water. Damn. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, uh, in Mike Locker Up Flynn news, um, so apparently he told Mueller that someone connected to Congress tried to get him to not cooperate with the Mueller probe, and he has the voicemail to prove it. And by um, the 31st of this month, that tape should be made public. Well, it's still... been ordered to be released. Well, they're still blocking stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, fucking get rid of, uh, uh, I almost said Chelsea Clinton. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Lindsey Graham. The names are close. Oh my stars! Because apparently he told Mul he told uh, uh, Bob Barr to ignore the subpoena. Uh, yeah, he did. For fucking um, showing up before Congress, and I'm like, you're a sitting senator, man. Like you should, for the love of God, give some <clears throat> lip service to law and order. You fucking idiot. His lips are too busy with Trump's balls. But uh, but first, the other thing is that Mike Flynn also said that members of uh, Trump's team wanted to reach out to WikiLeaks, which has, you know, since been proven to be a Russian propaganda site. So that's even more collusion. Yeah. But um, with Lindsey Graham, I have um, four quotes from him I'd like to read right quick. I prepared them ahead of time. Okay, read them all. So Lindsey Graham, February 2016, he's talking about Trump. I think he's a kook. I think he's crazy. I think he's unfit for office. Okay. Okay. So, Lindsey Graham, November 2017, also talking about Trump. What concerns me about the American press is the endless, endless attempt to label the guy as some kind of kook who's not fit to be president. <laughs> uh, I feel like there's got to be another Lindsey Graham quote in there. Where, Wait a minute. Putin has my gay Tinder profile password? <laughs> oh, my stars. Trump is great. <laughs> Yeah, fuck that dude. Lindsey Graham, 2015. Donald Trump is a race-baiting, xenophobic bigot. Lindsey Graham, 2018. He's not, in my view, a racist by any stretch of the imagination. I have never heard him make a single racist statement. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and say that Lindsey Graham has been replaced with a giant space cockroach wearing a Lindsey Graham skin suit. Possibly, that seems most likely. A Lindsey Graham quote 2016. Sugar and water. <laughs> more. More. Yeah. More sugar and more water. Yeah, um, it's a space cockroach. That's all I can figure. Yep. Well, that's everything I have for the uh, for the week. That's everything I have, too. I'm tired. I'm spent. I'm burnt out. Uh, that is our podcast. Uh, uh, Pat, hit him with the socials. Okay, if you would like to reach us, you can do so at those muckrakers on twitter you can also email us at those muckrakers at gmail.com and if you would like to leave comments that i'm far more likely to notice you can do so at youtube.com slash thriftington post where we put up videos of all the uh, muckrakers and maybe soon they'll actually be like video videos and not just a still image that way they Who know what, that way they know what we look like when they come to uh take us <laughs> to guantanamo bay but, Exactly. When the revolution comes, they'll know whose face is not to spare. Yes. Well, uh, I guess until next time, I don't know, man. Do something relaxing. Try to not be as angry as I felt the last forever ago. I mean, my uh, my voice was raw and sore before we even got started shouting today. Yeah, my soul was raw and sore before we started shouting today. Mine too. It's just like rotten hollow empty on the inside i'm losing my willpower to scream because i'm all screamed out at this point and it's not that i don't care it's that i'm losing my capacity to care because the bar for how angry i have to be before i can begin to care again just keeps getting lifted higher and higher well, and i don't think it'll ever reach a summit at this point well that's why i'm going to start but, taking up painting with uh, bob ross videos that sounds wonderful and then maybe someday with bob ross's help 
the summited bar could be brought back down again. We're going to put a little tree right there. That's right. That tree is going to collude, but that's going to be our secret. <laughs> <laughs> now everyone gets mad sometimes, but right now we're going to take all that anger and just wash it away and turn it into a bird. Your anger is now a bird. We're going to we're just going to paint Trump in a nice little jail cell there. Yeah, and you can put a little <laughs> little window on the back that uh, looks over the yard. That'll be our little window. We can look at that window and hope that that's all he'll ever get to see for the rest of his life. We'll just go ahead and take off his wig so you can see his wrinkly, pasty white head. That's what his head actually looks like. Now just remove the dangerous clown makeup. And... <laughs> oh, look at him. Oh, he is a nasty little thing. And he'll just look out his, his little square window at, at his little tree where he'll see a bird. <laughs> and know that he'll never be free. Never be free is that bird. Never be free. <laughs>